Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll take a look at a book titled Boogie's Houses uh, Celibes uh, by Ursula Schulz Dornburg, published by Mac. Sir Kolhoff wrote, Like floating boats on a yellow-green sea of bodies, the houses stand motionless between heaven and earth. During the rainy season, when the land is flooded, they literally stand above the water. Their inhabitants, boogies farmers living in the north of the provincial capital Makassar, sometimes need canoes to reach their dwellings. Facing the main road that runs along the west coast of South Sulawesi, they stand frozen in time. The Bugis people live in South Sulawesi, the southwestern peninsula of the central Indonesian island Sulawesi, formerly known as Celibes. Numbering approximately 6 million, they inhabit the central part of the peninsula, between the Makazarisi, a culturally related people living to the south, and their northern neighbors, the Taraja and the Mandarisi. By far the most significant means of subsistence for the majority of Bugis people is agriculture, especially wet rice cultivation, while fishery is important for coastal dwellers. Some villages on the coast of South uh, Salawesi specialize in boat building and their boats are well known in the archipelago. Since the 18th century, the Bugis and the Makazaris peoples have played a substantial role in inter-insular trade in the archipelago. In the past, the Bugis and the Makazaris were politically organized in over a dozen kingdoms, each ruled by a royal line founded by semi-divine mythic figures originating from the upper world or the lower world. The founding myths form the beginning of the various written chronicles that record the history of the kingdoms and their rulers. The life in the Boogie's world is not without danger. On the contrary, both the natural and the supernatural world are full of threats to one's well-being and even to one's life. Protection against uh, the outside world, full of evil spirits, bad people and dangerous situations, is essential for a happy life. Family is an important defense against always potentially dangerous outsiders that threaten one's well-being. The house in which people live with their family is the safest place to be. Built from wood and bamboo, it offers protection against the threats of the natural world, like heavy monsoon rains, storms and earthquakes, as well as fellow humans with bad intentions. The house constitutes one's own microcosm, reflecting the three-layered cosmos of Boogie's mythology. A Boogie's house is built on posts uh, and its entrance door, some 2.5 meters above the ground, is reached by stairs. The door opens onto the front room, the area where guests are received. Behind the central wall are the spaces reserved to the family living in the house. This is where food is cooked and eaten, where people sleep and live. This layer of the house represents the middle world. The attic, where rice sheaves were traditionally stored, is associated with the upper world while the space under the house corresponds to the lower world. From a horizontal perspective, the boogie's house resembles the human body. It has a body, head, foot and navel. The entrance door is always located at the foot side of the house, the end toward which rainwater flows under the house. For their well-being, people staying in the house should always lay down with their head pointing in the opposite direction of the foot side and the door. In the private section behind the central wall, the house's main post is located, the navel of the house, where the family presents offerings to the spirits of the house and to their ancestors. Traditionally, the front of the house faced inland, but nowadays the houses generally face the road. Boats are also associated with the human body. 
They also have a head and an evil, for example. Like houses, boats offer essential protection against uh, the forces of nature, and both need regular offerings to their spirits. Building a house starts with the selection of a good location and the right kind of wood for the posts. After that, the frame of the house is built, uh, with the posts not driven into the ground but resting on stone blocks. This makes it possible to move complete houses or turn them around if necessary. The floor, traditionally made from uh, flattened bamboo, but now more often from wooden planks, is the next to be constructed. The roof was once made of thatched palma leaves, uh, but nowadays these are almost always replaced by much safer and more durable corrugated iron sheets. Finally, the walls, prefabricated from bamboo or wood, are attached to the outer posts of the house. This kind of construction makes it easy to adapt uh, the house to changing circumstances. Looking at a traditional Bugis house from the outside can tell you something about its inhabitants. The size and materials used indicate their economic position. The form of the stairs and the number of panels marking up the gable suggest their position in the social hierarchy. Temporary extensions point to an upcoming wedding in the family. Closed doors and windows during the day indicate the occupants are having their meal. Opening up one's body to let food in makes one especially vulnerable to harmful influences and so the openings of the house are closed for extra protection. While traditional houses are still built, especially in villages, in the last few decades they have increasingly been replaced by modern brick and concrete houses at ground level. The book was designed by Morgan Crocroft Brown and printed in Italy. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video. Bye!